Oh, thank you everybody for coming. Um, so yeah, welcome to Chocolatey Fest. Pretty excited. Uh, I've been working with Chocolatey since, I don't know, seven years ago. Uh, and I apologize for any of my poorly built packages that might still be up there. But I think, uh, I think Gary uh, handled most of the fixes on those. Um, so I hope uh, you got enough chocolate, if, there, if you got any. Um, but definitely, you can't have Chocolatey Fest without chocolate. Or a hot cup of chocolatey. Um, so, and that's otter. That's our otter. And we want to, our, our kind of our, our problem case is, we want to reliably manage our software in all of our environments. Um, primarily, we'll be focusing today on just going from like a simple dev to production scenario. Um, so, you know, perhaps we could use PowerShell, Chocolatey, and Git uh, to do what we need. Let's, let's take a look at how that might look. So this is kind of an overview of what we're gonna do. So initially we're gonna set up, what does the setup look like with Otter and the other tools? And provisioning is kind of the bootstrapping phase of a, of a new system. And then management is that kind of that cycle of uh, testing out new software and getting that deployed to your development environment. And then we want to promote. Uh, so in the promotion phase, uh, we're going to uh, move that to production using Git uh, best practices. And then finally, that ongoing process of remediation. So let's look at the setup. So to set up, we want to get Otter installed, um, which is a fairly straightforward uh, setup. I'm not going to go through that today. That can be exercised for the viewer. Um, but it's gonna install a database if you need it. Uh, it should be a like a few minutes to install. And we wanna set up source control integration. Uh, this is gonna be standard. Uh, we're gonna be using GitHub. Uh, so standard create a you know, new repository. And in our case, we're gonna be using uh, dev, a, a dev branch and a master branch um, for today's demos. And now in Otter, there's a concept called rafts. And rafts can be, can, tied to different types of resources. In this case, it's tied to a uh, Git repository. And the default raft, that, that name is a convention that Otter uses so that when anytime you just edit something that's not on a raft, it will go to the default raft, so any changes. And then when you notice we tie that to the dev branch uh, in the Git repository. And then we also wanna keep, create a production raft, and we just give it the name prod, and you notice the branch is uh, tied to the master branch, just kind of git flow best practices where master is your production release content. And then uh, we have the option to install agents. Otter has a standalone agent that runs on, the, on servers or it can run agentless. I sometimes tend to uh, opt for agents just because the data transmission is uh, a little bit faster than using native PowerShell uh, remoting for, for moving files. So the agent installer, just a quick uh, installer that can be run interactively or uh, non-interactively, and it produces an encryption key. Once those are, are built out, uh, we're gonna create servers in Otter, and those, uh, basically, we specify the details there, the, the server name, the, uh, the type of encryption. In this case, that, it's that encryption key from when we did the agent installer. So that will authenticate that, that agent. And then one of the most important things we wanna do is uh, provision or set up the roles on the server within Otter. Uh, so the roles will uh, have dependencies between the roles so that way we can go from a clean install build up to a functioning box that we can deploy packages, PowerShell modules, all that type of thing. Okay, so now it is time to provision. So in the provisioning phase, this is where we're gonna be doing kind of that one-time server setup. Uh, uh, we're gonna be prepared for doing actual configuration. Uh, we wanna get it working on actual dev servers first before even trying it out in production. Uh, so your scenario might be uh, you have a build environment and you do not want to take down your whole company's development because you updated a piece of software. Like, you know, typically a hotspot one is like NPM or TypeScript, uh, those versions have, generally have to be very specific, um, or the version of .NET, whatever it is. And so 
In Otter, um, basically you have these dependencies, chains, and you can, any one role can depend on any number of uh, other roles. Uh, but in our case today, we're gonna be just doing a simple linear chain. So we start down here, the PowerShell package client, which kind of gets the, the NuGet things, all those things where you get prompts, all that stuff out of the way. Um, it gets uh, your, any DSC resources we're gonna get installed. Um, also the chocolatey client proper. And then we're gonna, uh, in this package consumer role, we'll set up different uh, uh, custom feeds for the chocolatey and uh, PowerShell feeds. So in the uh, po uh, PowerShell client role, uh, we're gonna install the uh, Bootstrap PowerShell modules. And this is a, a sample of what is called OtterScript. Uh, and so in here, we're, so we're, this is the Bootstrap PowerShell, and we have a list of um, PowerShell modules, and we're just gonna be iterating over those modules, and then this is what's called a PS Ensure. And so there's a collection script and a configure script. And so we tend to use PowerShell at these lower levels uh, because that's all we can assume is safely installed on a system. So in this case, we're, we're checking for a DSC resource with a particular module name. If that's not installed, if the value returned is not true, uh, then we're gonna run the configure, and that's just going to install that module uh, and by default, that's gonna pull from the PS gallery for that module. And then down here, we're doing some other work um, for ensuring uh, some settings for the uh, max envelope size for PowerShell just to uh, move data back and forth, larger amounts of data. And then in our, uh, our package management configuration, we wanna set custom source URLs. In our case, we're setting them to point to our uh, local ProGet server, where we have all of our internalized um, chocolatey packages and um, uh, PowerShell modules. Uh, you can also set that up for, for NuGet or NPM or Docker, um, other types of things. Generally, you know, if you're running in an enterprise, you would want to have that internal um, uh, package repository so you can uh, you know, cache serve, you can cache packages, you can deploy enterprise internal packages. Um, it makes it a lot simpler uh, to, to have that custom repository. And we're also going to install uh, uh, other DSC resources that we use for uh, configuring Chocolatey. In this case, we're doing the C Choco uh, module and the Chocolatey module. And then finally, install the Chocolatey client, which we obviously need to do Chocolatey. Um, okay, so demo one is to bootstrap some servers. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so here we ha have three different servers. We have dev, prod, and a test server. And you can see the test server has a drift on it because that's set to uh, manually uh, uh, remediate drift. Um, these other ones are set to automatic. So anytime there's a, a drift uh, detected, it will automatically apply the necessary change to get into the desired state. Uh, so right now, let's take a look at the dev server and see what it has installed on it. So if you look at the configuration tab of the server, we can see there's several different things, resources installed. We have chocolatey, we have a custom feed uh, for chocolatey, um, the chocolatey software DSC resource, and that's just ensuring that it's present. And we installed uh, the C Choco and chocolatey um, DSC modules through the DSC package management. And down here is just the general, these are just general uh, PowerShell uh, PS ensures, and here is where we have chocolatey packages already installed on this server. Uh, and so, and then down here, this just sets up the server for particular settings. Okay, now, what we wanna do is get our production server to get to that state. Uh, so let's take a look at our current production server. So right now, let's look at the configuration. So there's nothing there, just the prod server, which is, uh, if we look at it, it'll just say, uh, you know, it exists, it does automated drift remediation, and then it's on the production raft. So just some basic things there. So now to get it to, move, to get provisioned, so we're assuming this is a new production server, um, the, the code is already on the production branch, but we haven't applied the role yet, so it hasn't uh, deployed. 
So we're going to assign a role. Now here is the list of all the roles we have. I'm just gonna apply this one role because it actually, through the chain dependencies, depends on all these other subsequent roles. So let's go ahead and apply that. So we're gonna assign that role and we're gonna initiate a check configuration. Okay, so this will take a few minutes. Uh, so what we're seeing here is that it's going through the different insurer checks, checking the different uh, PS insure statements. Okay, now there's activity happening. Um, the, right there, that big chunk was just looking for inventory of, of chocolatey packages and DSC packages. And if, the, if it, a PS insurer finds anything that matches, you'll see this, um, the, the configuration matches template. Sorry for scrolling there. So it's still going through and comparing. We're doing some basic bootstrapping. We're getting the package management DSC resource installed. Okay, now we're installing the PowerShell. We're ensuring that this chocolatey uh, DSC resource is installed. And then the C Choco uh, module, which is the one that pretty much is the official chocolatey package. And so this, will, this should finish in about, uh, you know, about two minutes. So um, once this, so there we, okay, so now we're moving on to, okay, we got a warning there saying, hey, we need to get this package to production ASAP, because without PowerShell Core, how can you do anything? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look what happened there. So now, our, now we have 13 configurations on our production server. And so now it has all these basic things, but it doesn't have any of the chocolatey packages. So we'll, uh, we'll, we need to get those. Now let's take a look at our packages. So we can see that the only package we have is the chocolatey package. And we have all these um, DSC modules installed on this system. So this is the inventory for modules. And this would also support um, uh, Debian and RPM packages as well. So. Let's hop on back to where we were. Okay, so now it's time to manage. So this is where we want to get that one package. We saw the warning for that our management wants to get into production. Okay, so we're gonna manage chocolatey packages to install. We're gonna select that set. Now we're gonna make an assumption that we've done some of that um, install in development already. As we saw, we had six of those chocolatey packages already there. And any other environment can specific settings. Um, so we're gonna install PowerShell modules. Some are installed by the Bootstrap DSC resources module in uh, Otter module. Um, and that's gonna install the, the CChoco and chocolatey modules. We're gonna set up any other server configuration. We're not gonna drive into this much, but this would be a things like environment variables, registry settings, uh, permissions, that type of thing. Okay, so we're gonna install a new chocolatey package. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our servers. So let's connect. Dev. So we're just going to use a standard chocolatey command of list, local only. So we can see our set of packages. This is on the dev server. And then I'm going to hop over to the production server. There's PowerShell remoting in there. And so we'll do the same thing. And so the only package we have installed right now is the chocolatey package. Uh, so our goal is to get all the packages that are in dev to production in a somewhat reliable manner. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bypass some of the probably uh, proper CI CD things that should happen in between that. And we're just gonna focus on kind of the developer centric aspects, which is the code review and the, and the pull request. Uh, so let's hop over to Our otter. So in this case, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go to assets. Oops, this got out of whack here. 
There we go. So we're going to go to the assets. This is, all these assets are tied to the, the Git repository. So we're going to go to our modules, and we have our list of modules stored in this particular one called Ensure Chocolatey Packages. And so now what we want to do is just grab this one that we need to get to production, and we're going to put that in our set here, and we're going to save that plan. So when that saves, that is actually committing that change and then pushing that to the dev branch in GitHub. And so now let's go back to our servers. To dev, and we're gonna run a check configure. Right now we have 19 uh, uh, configurations. When we run this, we should get 20. Okay, this one should run quicker because that um, the PowerShell core is a, a cache locally and it's been internalized, so it doesn't have to go grab all the bytes. It has a bunch of depend like KB dependencies, knowledge base dependencies. Okay, so now it's going through all the insure statements. Yes, insure. Okay, so that insured. So now let's take a look at the state of the machine. So now we have 20 in the configuration and if we go down to our packages that are installed, we see that we have the PowerShell core internal. And also, if we, this is, if we go look at the packages through the inventory view, we see the PowerShell core internal is also installed. So now, at this point, through the life cycle of the, of the de development phase, we're basically treating our systems much like, just like any other code. That's the goal. Um, that's easier said than done, but... Uh, um, and so uh, at this point, we want to begin to merge that code uh, as soon as, let's hop back. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna go to promote. So in promote, um, we wanna move configuration changes from our lower environments from dev to higher ones. Uh, which, you know, production, staging, QA, in our case, we're going straight to production. Don't recommend that, but, you know, for brevity, that's what we're going to do. Um, so the first thing we want to do is go to GitHub. We want to create a pull request from our dev branch to our test branch. In our case, we're going to our, our master branch. So let's hop over there. Okay, so... Let's just do a standard new pull request. And we're gonna compare dev to master. So we haven't, we're able to merge. Let's see what the changes are. Okay, well, a few changes here for my demo scripts, so a little bit of behind the scenes, behind the curtain on that. Um, and then these are the, really what we care about for what we're trying to accomplish. We wanna move these packages at those specific versions into production which currently doesn't have any of those packages. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll approve this, or we'll create the pull request. And then obviously, with, as with any pull request, you would get, have approvals, you would have uh, build and test sign off, so you'd be able to test in your dev environment, any automated testing um, as much as possible, like the Yelp guys are talking about, great, great presentation on that. Um, so then you get, you know, you get all your green lights on your branch, on your pull request that would allow it to go forth. Let's assume that happens. Let's say all your coworkers say it's good to go and you didn't do anything stupid. Uh, not that I would ever do that. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and merge that. So no conflicts. So we're going from dev to master. And so let's take a look now. So now if we hop back over to our server, on our production server. And now, so we have, we're at 13 configurations and, our, and we only have one package, so we wanna double check that after we run our configuration. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Again, it's this, uh, this similar screen, which you, you do tend to get used to. Um, so right now, that, there's asynchronous things happening with job execution, so it may just be delayed a little bit, maybe due to time 
differences in the VM versus the host. So it's going to incur in the future. Hopefully not. There we go. Not too far. Um, OK, again, the live lo log output. It's going to be ensuring these modules. OK, so it's detecting some drift. Should detect drift on all those packages. Now, I tried to optimize this for performance, so hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, I did that. The optimization came from mainly the package internalization and then using the, a local um, ProGet server to uh, store all those packages. But there's still install time. Uh, so some of these packages take longer than others. You can see some of those are 22 seconds to install. So we're doing Notepad++, you got to have that. Uh, we're a chocolatey core extension that implicitly comes in from PowerShell uh, core, I believe. Through a dependency chain. That's what, is what's great about chocolatey is that you don't really have to consider a lot of the dependencies as you're installing. You don't have to worry about which knowledge bases are installed because the community is so great at getting all of that content lined up. And then, so we're just dealing at a very high level with Chocolatey, but there's so much detail and work that's going on behind the scenes that makes this possible. Git install, that takes a little bit longer. Uh, there we go, that's done. That took, yeah, it took 40 seconds for that one. I tried playing around with like parallelizing Chocolatey installers, like fire them off all off at once. It didn't go so well, but it was fast. It was very fast. Uh, just a lot of retries. I don't know if that's ever going to be possible. It might be a Windows thing. Okay, we got Bitcoin. You got to have Bitcoin in production servers. You never know. So you can see uh, Chocolate is creating those shims, which is really handy for getting everything in your, all your executables in your path. Okay, now we're finally on the PowerShell core, and let's see it's taking care of those knowledge base installs. And that should do it. Okay, so it got all those installed. I apologize for the, that, that wasn't expeditious, but. Um, so in prod, let's take a look. Okay, so our configuration, so we should see down here all of our chocolatey packages at the specific version installed. And then we want to look at our packages. And so there, oh, I guess I have to rerun the inventory uh, because they're for the new packages. Um, but if I reran the inventory, it would be a, a quick check. And the, so in Otter, basically the inventory and the checking is happening by default every hour. Um, you can configure that to every five minutes or however long. Um, so let's hop back. That's kind of that promotion uh, process. So yeah, we merged that pull request, and then Otter automatically pulled that branch, and we promoted that from dev to production, and it auto-remediated that, all that drift that was detected. Okay, so then finally, the last phase of the life cycle is just kind of that ongoing remediation, configuration change, and, and, and so on. Uh, so uh, Otter will detect drift and report that back. You can set up servers to be either automatic drift remediation or manual. Uh, so if it's manual, you'll basically just see, hey, this drifted, now it's up to you to initiate a job uh, to, to handle that. So drift, just it occurs when actual state differs from the expected state, standard like DSC, Puppet, they all have the similar uh, uh, paradigms. Again, uh, manual or auto remediation. And so uh, in our case, we have two servers automatic, one manual. And so let's take a look at the manual. So in this case, we have a test server that is set to uh, manual remediation. You'll see if we look at it, so it's, in, it's a drifted state. If we look at the configuration, so there's one thing that's drifted here. We, this PowerShell max envelope size isn't configured. And you'll see that there's a lot fewer configurations, and that's mainly because other roles depend on this one to be configured 
before you even want to attempt to check the other ones because your other roles may have certain technology requirements to even do the checking. Uh, for instance, if I need to check if cho a chocolatey package exists, I need to have chocolatey present. Uh, so let's go ahead and just run check configuration and see what happens. Okay, so that, oh, I need to set it, okay. I need to set it to auto-remediate. And so we're going to edit this, and we're just going to set this to auto-remediate. Okay, now let's view that execution. Oh, interesting. A firewall, okay, well, I couldn't anticipate that. That's a PowerShell WinRM thing. All right, so we'll have to skip that one. Five minutes, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so um, I think that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, the, the remediation, basically, when you're in that state, you just initiate a, uh, a manual job, and then it'll remediate. Um, okay, so this is kind of the, the picture of what we talked about, setup, provisioning, managing, promoting, and remediating. Uh, that was, it's a pretty uh, straightforward process. Um, it's, uh, it seems simpler than it, than it kind of is. It, took, uh, you know, took a, it takes a while to kind of grok um, how you might do multiple environments. Um, but uh, so, given that, does anybody have any questions about anything that I could detail? Yes, sir. Yes, that's a good question, sure. Let's take a look at that. So if we go back to, let's look at our prod server. So if we look at, so the last run we did was, um, okay, we're gonna go here to look at our collection log. So the logs are stored here. So by default, we're viewing what's called the detail log. And so that will uh, classify things into, the, into their roles. So we can go back and view the roles. And, th and it, historically, this, this same data exists for each and every run. Uh, so it'll tell you, like for instance, um, in this case, let's look at the PowerShell client. So generally, you know, it'll say configuration matches template. It just means the, the expected current ex uh, state matches the expected state. Um, and in this case, I'm, remember on this run, I think on this run everything was already remediated. Um, but it would say like the, the expected state differs and that would be logged in exactly what was, what was remediated. Okay, yeah, this, so if we want to go back to the one that actually performed the, we can look at the historical logs. So that's going to be in the, we go to the administ. Okay, sure. Oh, what, uh, what drifted and when? Okay, um, I mean, there's the, we would have the, uh, where's the log here? executions log. So this gives us the log. So if we look at the prod server, so let's take a look at this one. This was at 1030. So we look at that. This will, let's see, drift. Just looking here. This one may not have had drift. What was that? Well, so the, I mean, by default, the report, the report for drift is on this screen. So this, this is like the general drift reporting screen. Uh, so like, like you saw before, this max envelope size KB was drifted. It had an orange. Uh, so that would be generally, uh, like, in, like in general operation, you would come to this screen. It would notify at the top level, like if you're sitting on the server screen, you would see if there's any drift here. Um, and if it's not drifted, it would just be green. That. But yeah, you can go back through the logs and it'll tell you exactly what, what did drift and what was uh, remediated. Any other questions?
Yes, sir. Handle rollbacks, like rolling back from what? A preview. Well, I would imagine you could do a um, git reset hard. That would be a way, right? You could go back to a specific commit version, and then that would roll back your, all your package versions. Um, now, the caveat to that is obviously it would not handle uninstalling. Uh, so that would be the caveat with that. Version, if it was already versioned, the version numbers would roll back. Uninstalling, that would not be implicit. You'd have to do something for that. That would, that would be, yeah, that would probably be the way to do that, yeah. Any other uh, questions? Oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else? All right, well, I appreciate all your time today. I uh, hope it was valuable for you. All right, take care. Have fun at Trophy Fest. I guess I could remember it for something. <laughs>